Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Um, there was um, a small earthquake, a magnitude 2.3 there in Magna, Utah, uh, near Salt Lake City. 395 people reported feeling this earthquake. Most of the reports came from the Salt Lake City area. And we can he see here by uh, Utah Lake, there was some reports. And also up here, I can't read the name of it. Um, Ogden, Utah. Now, in March, I believe, of this year, there was a magnitude 5.7, uh, March 18th. Now, the Wasatch Fault Line is divided up into 10 different sections. And there was an interesting article interviewing the University of Utah, Bob Smith, seismologist, about the dangers of a magnitude... 7, 7.5 earthquake uh, for the Wasatch section. You might notice this blue line that I drew out. According to Bob Smith, if there was a magnitude uh, 7.5 earthquake, um, this whole area could flood. Everything that's in blue. Um, Davies County, I believe this is, or Davies, um, and taking out part of the city itself. See that? Um, Interstate Highway 15 and 90, I believe. Oh, 80. That's what it is. What he explained could happen if there's a major earthquake uh, along the Wasatch section of the fault line is that the valley floor could sink, uh, could tip, creating um, the saturation, the flooding, uh, liquefaction from the Great Salt Lake. Because of the damage to the infrastructure, and there's a lot of buildings and bridges that are unreinforced. Uh, buildings that are masonry, unreinforced masonry. They are recommending people carry with them in their car and at their home, no matter where they go, um, a survival kit, a bug out bag that would last at least 70 hours. I'll give you a link to this article on the Desert News. Here it says, areas that would have been flooded include the Salt Lake City International Airport and much of that city west of I-15 and roughly north of I-80, plus some areas of downtown area. Much of Davis County could also have been affected, including areas in Centerville and Farmington west of I-15. He says that in the worst-case scenario, the tilt of the valley floor could be enough to make Great Salt Lake or Utah Lake permanently flood, permanently flood many populated areas, including parts of downtown Salt Lake City, permanently flooded. An earthquake of about 7.0 occur on average every two to 300 years somewhere on the broad Wasatch Front area. He also said they occur on average about once every 1,000 300 years in the Salt Lake City uh, segment of the Wasatch Fault. And the last time it happened, and this article's dated uh, 2006, was 1,300 years ago. Um, in that 1,300 years, um, a lot of pressure has built up. A 7.0, he says, would affect about 80% of the population of Utah. Bridges across the Jordan River would fail, the ground would turn to quicksand, liquefaction. And for the population that was there back in 2006, they said about uh, 6,200 people would die. More than 600 teachers and students in the schools would be killed. And more than 90,000 people with injuries and almost 21,000 people would require hospitalization. Now that's from statistics of 2006. Of the 38 hospitals along the Wasatch Front, 15 of those would have moderate damage, where four of them, they say, would be completely destroyed. 42% of other buildings in the area would have at least moderate damage. There's a lot of stadiums and the university that run right along the Wasatch fault line. And then there's an adjoining fault line 
that runs along uh, Virginia Street. I don't know if you can see that, but it's in red. Here we got um, which university? Department of Chemistry. A quarter of all police and fire departments would also have moderate damage. Of the 2,270 highway bridges, 469 would have moderate damage and 140 would be damaged beyond repair. Um, that's a lot of bridges that would cut you off um, from getting help, etc., or for the services to get to you and help you. Most homes would be without water and electricity, and cell phone service would be knocked out. They also estimated in 2006 there would be at least 70 fires that would break out ignited by broken gas lines. This earthquake occurred at 11.18 p.m. last night. 395 people did report feeling this, and it should be a wake-up call that at least that 395 people and their friends and families, loved ones, should get prepared for a major earthquake because it is way overdue. Yeah, three days of food, water, medical supplies, uh, definitely medical supplies if you're going to be cut off for three days from assistance. Maybe taking a, a course in first aid would, would be helpful. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.